Over the last 10 years, the Fun Spot Parks in Florida have stepped up their game. They had been around since the 1990s as a go-kart track, arcade, Ferris wheel, and other minor attractions like that. But in 2011, they added their first major coaster to their Kissimmee Park and bought land for a huge expansion of the Orlando Park. This would lead to their three coasters opening in 2013, Sea Serpent, Freedom Flyer, and their main attraction, a GCI wooden coaster called White Lightning. The Kissimmee Park would be without that signature coaster until 2017, when they hired the Gravity Group to build Mindblower. And now both parks, just 13 miles apart, sported a coaster that would draw coaster enthusiasts to check it out. I've been to these fun spot parks twice now, once in 2018 and again last month, and I want to pit these two wooden coasters against each other and see who comes out on top. Let's do the battle of the fun spot wooden coasters. White Lightning versus Mindblower. I have seven categories to run through, and we'll start with presentation. Both of these coasters have their charm. White Lightning runs along the edge of the park, starting in one corner and running pretty close to the other corner, and then it turns around and goes back to the station, so it's pretty visible anywhere you go in the park. Mindblower isn't quite as sprawling, pretty much confined to one small footprint, so it doesn't really tour the park like White Lightning. The one thing that Mindblower has in its favor is the water in the middle of the park. The lake is set right under the sky coaster, and Mindblower looks amazing when you look across from the other side of the water. The inversion is also perfectly placed right over the station, right there in plain sight for people to marvel at, or for kids to get freaked out over. For presentation, it's close, but I'm gonna have to go with Mindblower. Also, not even joking about this, I thought some of White Lightning's supports were made of wood. I was thinking, why would they do that? And then I got closer, and I realized that wasn't wood. It was the white metal supports being totally rusted out. That white steel had turned brown, so that really doesn't help White Lightning's case either. Let's move on to the trains. These coasters were made by different manufacturers, and they put their signature trains on each one. White Lightning is a GCI, so it has Millennium Flyers, and Mindblower is a Gravity Group, so this has Timberliners. I didn't used to like Timberliners. It seemed like it was hard not to get stapled, but the more I've ridden them, the more i figured them out to get some extra room. Timberliners are always super comfortable, and I have no complaints with the trains. And then there's the Millennium Flyers. Instead of the lap bar coming down from the side, these are like T-bars coming from the middle between your legs. I love these trains also. They might not be as luxurious as Timberliners, but you get plenty of airtime with those lap bars, getting that one or two clicks. And the ride ups at Fun Spot aren't going to staple you either, so you get to experience all the airtime the ride has to offer. Both trains get an A rating from me, so we'll have this come down to presentation. On White Lightning, the trains are themed to what looks like the front of a locomotive. Mindblower's trains have dynamite stuck to the front, making them some of the coolest trains on the planet. This point goes to Mindblower. Next up, the layout. These are very different rides, as I briefly touched on in the presentation category. White Lightning has an L-shaped out and back layout, while Mindblower is built on top of itself, and it's weaving in and out of its own structure. For being an out and back L-shaped coaster, White Lightning does a good job mixing up the elements. It's not just hill, hill, turn, hill, hill. It has an elevated bank turn to start, then a double up and a double down. The second half is a little more basic before it crosses over itself again and winds its way to the brake run. There wasn't a whole lot they could do here, from a creative standpoint, but I think they did the best they could. Mindblower has a much more compact layout, with twists and turns along with his hills, an intense low to the ground turn at the beginning, overbank turns, traditional hills, twisted hills, a double down, and of course, the corkscrew, all with the added thrill of riding through the steel supports. It also has a straight first drop at 65 degrees, which feels a lot steeper, and White Lightning's twisted drop is pretty good, but it's not quite as strong. Mindblower has the stronger layout. Now, let's talk airtime. Time of day seems to matter when it comes to how well these coasters are running. I've still never been able to ride these at night, but now I can say I've ridden both in the morning and the afternoon. The first time I rode White Lightning, it was in the morning and I had a half-empty train, and I thought it pretty much had no airtime. Then I moved on to Mindblower in the afternoon, and I thought the airtime was really strong. This year, I reversed course and got to ride Mindblower in the morning with a half-empty train, but still, I thought it had excellent airtime from the first drop all the way to the final breaks. So kudos to the Gravity Group for designing this with real, unconditional airtime. After leaving Kissimmee, I went to Orlando for some rides on White Lightning, and this time it had a full train and it was about 3 p.m. Those rides were so much better. I finally felt that airtime that people were talking about. The ride looks like it was made for airtime, and I was so disappointed the first time. But once you get some weight in the train, and you get those wheels warmed up, it finally delivered. This raised my opinion of White Lightning a lot. That being said, Mindblower still has better airtime, and it doesn't rely on specific conditions to feel it. Point goes to Mindblower. Next up is Smoothness, and this is where White Lightning will finally get a point on the board. 
I was stunned how rough the one-year-old Mindblower was when I wrote it in 2018, and I thought maybe they fixed something over the last three years. They did not. It's not so rough to the point where you can't enjoy it, but it's rough enough to make you want to tap out after two rides. In 2018, we did eight rides, spread out a little bit, and this time we did two back row rides without getting off, and that's all we got. It was exactly as I remember, if not a little worse. I would have got another ride before we left, but the ride got shut down for a thunderstorm. But my advice for anyone coming to Funspot Kissimmee and wanting to get a bunch of rides on Mindblower, start early and take breaks. It's such a great ride. You can see that over the first four categories, but it can really be hard to take. On the other hand, White Lightning isn't exactly butter smooth, but it's a heck of a lot smoother than Mindblower. It has a couple of rough spots, but you can easily marathon this without getting off and not have any problem. Sure, it's more drawn out and less intense, so that helps. But I'm not joking when I say something is very wrong with Mindblower. It was built the same year as Mystic Timbers, and that still runs glossy smooth. There must have been something wrong with the way they built it, which makes me hope that one day they can fix it. As if White Lightning needed to pile on, it also has a section near the end that features GCI's new Titan track, a steel replacement for the wood. You're only going over that part for a second or less, but you can actually feel the difference between that and the wood, and it'll be interesting to see a coaster use this over its entire track in the future. Even though White Lightning gets just one point here, it's a big point. Now let's look at the ride stats. Mindblower is 14 feet taller, about 4 miles per hour faster, and about 250 feet longer. Once you take out the non-prime ride track, meaning the lift, brakes, and station, Mindblower's edge turns out to be 281 feet. Mindblower has just one more second of ride time from lift to brakes, 36 seconds versus 35 seconds, and more than a 6 foot per second edge on pacing, 51.9 feet per second versus 45.3. Even though Mindblower gets this point, these are very close, and you probably wouldn't be able to tell which one is better by just riding it. The last category is Special Elements. What makes these rides stand out? For White Lightning, not a whole lot. I mentioned the Titan Track, and even though we may look back one day and point to White Lightning as the coaster that kicked off the Titan Track revolution, right now it's just a blip on the radar, and it probably doesn't catch the eye of the everyday rider. While not super unique, I think the double up followed by the double down is probably the signature element. Mindblower is a different story. The corkscrew is right there by the Mindblower sign, right over the station, so you can see it if you're in line if you're in the station, or if you're pretty much anywhere in the park. An inversion on a wooden coaster is still pretty rare, adding to the marvel. This is a GP magnet, and it'll draw the enthusiasts also. The rest of the layout is geared for forces, and it isn't all that unique, other than the double downs and the overbanks. But the inversion is the element that has the most character between the two coasters. Mindblower takes the final point. 6-1 to one Mindblower. That wasn't even close. And when you look at my overall rankings, White Lightning is at 132, and Mindblower is up at 61. I didn't touch Mindblower's ranking because it was exactly as I remembered it, but I gave White Lightning a big boost after finally getting those good rides on it. Most of the categories that Mindblower took were by a narrow margin, but White Lightning is leaps and bounds ahead of it in smoothness. So it comes down to Mindblower, an extreme and forceful airtime machine that'll beat you up, versus White Lightning, a little less extreme, but also with good airtime, and it runs much smoother. These aren't that far apart. Maybe if Mindblower got rough enough to the point where one ride is painful, rather than just not being able to get rewrites, then that would be a different story. Until then, Mindblower is superior, but don't sleep on White Lightning. Get a ride on both when you go to Orlando. Like I said, they're only 13 miles apart, and you only have to pay $10 extra on top of your one park wristband if you want to hit both parks in one day. If you've ridden both Mindblower and White Lightning, let me know what you think in the comments below. Which one do you prefer, and how much does the ride's layout play into your rankings compared to the roughness? I tried to forgive a rough ride if it has good forces, but I have a breaking point, and luckily, Mindblower hasn't reached that point yet. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. That's the best way to show your support for the channel. And if you're new here and love coasters, be sure to sub and check out the other reviews that I've done with my Coaster Reviews playlist. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, where you can chat with other fans of the channel, as well as my second channel, where I post copyright-free off-ride footage. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.